Um, it's a very gentle way to start off. That's a true story. Um, in a perfect world, let me back up. Uh, a while ago, I talked to my um, chiropractor and I was asking like, hey, colon cleanse, liver cleanse, like what do you guys think? And she said to me, listen, if you're eating the right foods that God designed for your body, you should never have to do a cleanse. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. And yet, what happens is, is that we don't do that. We don't all eat perfect 100% of the time. I don't, and I eat plants. That's all I eat. And we still have some cookies here and there. We still have ice cream. I drink a cup of coffee every morning. So right there, I'm allowing things to come into my body that were not designed to come in. And here's me. I'm not about like everything in moderation because I think that's the dumbest phrase that anybody ever said because nobody, we're humans. We don't know how to moderate ourselves. We're like, um, you know, intentional hedonists, right? Uh, so when we think about that, everything in moderation, it's like, listen, that's just going to go out the window. And what's moderate for you might be different than for me. Some of you guys might be like, Dunkin' Donuts on every corner. Heck yeah, just go once a week. To me, even once a month, I'm like, oh, it's like thousands of unnecessary calories and white sugar. So I digress. Um, so back to the colon cleansing. Yes, if you ate nothing but vegetables, very little fruits, zero flour anything, then you very likely would never have to do any kind of colon cleanse or liver cleanse. If you never got angry, if you never worried, if you never had anything negative happen in your life, you would never have to do a colon cleanse or a liver cleanse or a detox or any of that nonsense. But Kel Sapri, we live in a fallen world and crap happens. <laughs> That was not intentional, but super funny, right? Um, it happens, or it doesn't happen in the case of having a backed up colon. And so here we are, we find ourselves talking about gut health a lot. And as I dove in and started researching this a few months ago, really specifically for my daughter, here's what happens in our life, guys, is that in our family, um, I experiment on my family and then I share it with you guys. So a lot of times, if our family is going through something, I will research, we'll change things up, we'll grab an oil, we'll do some supplements, and we figure it out, and then I go ahead and feel confident to share with you, or not confident, but comfortable, um, so that it makes sense. And so this is what we did. With my daughter, when we moved two months ago, she was having just some weird breakouts, like right here, and she still is, is struggling a bit um, here. Some of it's normal. Her hormones, as you know, like 13, 14, 15, they just go like, and it's not until they level out and everything gets cool, um, where it's completely clean and clear. But this was abnormal, and what I realized is, you know what, driving across country, eating at Subway, God forbid, eating just junky foods, um, it, you know, your gut, it's not perfect. Here's what you need to know. Number one, write this down. If you're not taking notes now, do it, because you're gonna want to. You're gonna go back and go, wait, what'd you say? Oh shoot, I'm not gonna watch that video again because it went long. Write this down. Um, it takes 18 months for your gut to completely heal. That means, those of you on your gluten-free plan, those of you on your blah, 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 paleo, whatever, whatever you do, hear me. You are not going to see a healed gut if you have some serious like celiac, all that kind of stuff for at least 18 months. And that is, my friends, if you are eating perfectly. No Mike's pastry, no ice cream, Zippo, nothing. Not a grain of sugar, not an ounce of coffee passes your lips. That, my friends, is 18 months worth, okay? So I get weary when I see people, oh, I still got these gut problems. Oh, and P.S., that's also if you are completely healing yourself mentally, if you are walking through emotional freedom, if you are helping yourself let go of trapped emotions, that's when your gut can begin to heal. If you start forgiving your mom and dad, whoa, that's powerful. Someone needed to hear that, right? If you start forgiving your mom and dad, your gut's going to heal. But let's move on. Peppermint, starting off with a little gentle cleanse. That's why having it in your body is so good. Use your Vitality, drop it in your water. Please hold. It's cooling on the inside and the out. Now then, we talked about three things with Young Living this week. <clears throat> and we talked about um, how you can support your body through that. 
Oh, I was just going to pull up my notes. Hold on. Please hold. That was the wrong note. That was my emotional release class, which that's another class for another day. Um, there it is. So with our gut, what you need to know is that our gut, 100% of our immune system sits in our belly. You guys probably know that. So it is August 2nd. Um, and in about two months, you're going to see people having a full bone come apart from the inside out. Their bodies are just going to be needing some immune support. Here's the deal. We can head that off at the pass if we start supporting our bellies now. Do it now. Why would you wait to have a crisis diagnosis? Take it from me. You don't want a crisis diagnosis. You want to get the things handled now. So 100% of your immune system is right here. Your belly is your second brain. So as we think about it, if you... Um, ever feel like you have butterflies in your stomach? Well, you don't really actually have butterflies and there's nothing that's making you sick. What you're feeling is you're about to go up on stage and give a presentation that you're like, oh, am I prepared or am I not? And so your physical response is in your gut. So that can be needing some gut health, okay? So this week, we just talked more about the physical aspects. If you work on your belly and you start with I'm gonna take life nine probiotic and I'm gonna eat gluten free and I'm gonna and I'm gonna and I'm gonna and all these things and yet oh and then you add a little liver cleanse on top of it you just gently cleanse your liver because we're like we always tell you guys oh get the juvenile flex it's so good for your liver and it is and yet if you are not pooping two to three times a day that's a problem you what you're doing is you're detoxing your liver you're using a probiotic that's good for your belly, and yet when you get everything out, it stays there. So though, okay, I'm gonna get a little gross. I'm sorry. It's probably why some of you haven't been watching live. You're like, oh my God, I can't even like, let her know I'm watching live. Um, if you are pooping, which I hope you are, right? But if you're not two or three times a day, and you, your body, let's say you're eating kale, you're, you're doing your life nine, you're doing all these things that's taking some of those toxins and that junk out, it is not all coming out in that one time. It's not. It's just not. Because our bodies are designed, write this down, our bodies are designed to, I'll use a nice word, eliminate, or what is my, my son calls it the evacuation, I can't remember what he calls it, it's so funny. Oh, uh, I'm doing a septic tank. It's so odd. Um, if you are emptying your septic tank, it's designed to do that after every meal. It's designed to do it after every meal, every time you eat. So for all of you snackers out there, you should be doing this more than that. Now, there's doctors with all these alphabets after their name that would go toe to toe with me on this. But here's me. I teach anatomy to my kids. I just open a book and I read, hey, this is how our body is designed. It makes sense. Just because it's normal, no, excuse me, just because a lot of people don't poop more than once a day or more than twice a week or what have you, doesn't make it normal. What's normal is what we don't do as a culture. I'll say that again, because some of you might have missed that. What's normal is not what we do as a culture. Okay, so gut health, here we go. Uh, let's let's keep going now here we go we're already into this so <clears throat> if this is not you you may poop a little bit but on the insides of the colon think about the anatomy I know you guys a quick Google search will totally gross you out and fascinate you all at one time believe me I know from where I speak um, you will see on the outside of the colon walls there is still junk built up there that you have got to get out why because you have neurotransmitters in your belly that send signals to your brain, autism, Asperger's, um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all the brain stuff, you guys feel me, right? You hear me, all these things that we're talking about? That is getting messed with. That is screwing with your brain. So if you are not getting rid of the poop that is around on the inside of your colon, Okay, you, by default, are hindering those neurotransmitters that are here trying to send signals to the brain. This is why a lot of um, 
mamas who have kids with brain issues, oh, the ADD, ADHD, um, anything that happens in the brain, which is everything. But anything, especially with kids, are like, oh, we went gluten-free. Oh, we're doing this for gut health. Did you clean out their colon? Because, you know, Asperger's and all that, it doesn't ha You can do coping tools. You can minimize the, the effects. I don't have a kid with autism, so I'm not going to speak to that. Because otherwise I'm going to have some moms, like, find me. But Parkinson's can be reversed. Alzheimer's can be reversed. Just probably by pooping better. I mean, this is just me, the world according to Jen Weird. This is not necessarily um, that part being reversed. May not be, I don't know, I don't have someone, but I've read enough articles to say, hey, this guy had Alzheimer's and then all of a sudden, they were better. What if I'm right? Okay, so now, we've established that you must go to the bathroom after you eat. It is normal. What is not normal is not going every time you eat. And I know some of you on here are like, oh, once a day is fine with me. Great, that's fine. But don't come crying to me when you have the mental stuff or you've got the gut stuff and you're like, gosh, I wonder why this is happening. I know why it's happening because you refuse to go poop two, three times a day. Okay, ICP, comfort tone, and essential zymes were the three. It's actually in the cleansing trio. As I did my research, you know, here's me. I don't know if you guys realize this, but I'm the one who was in Young Living for a long time. And I'm like, oh wait, we have other kits besides the premium starter kit? Yeah, turns out we do. Collections, I should say. Um, and they're usually less expensive. So the cleansing trio is what it's called, has ICP. When you wonder what is ICP for, think of this way. I see poop. I, S-E-E, -E, poop. That'll just make you think, oh, that's what that's for. All right, so let me tell you about ICP. What well, would have been wise is to have my little bottle here, but it's over on my counter in my window so that I don't forget to take it and so my daughter doesn't forget to take it. What makes ICP so amazing? Guys, it is like a scrub brush for your colon. Do you remember what I was just saying? That even if you um, are doing a liver detox or whatever, whatever, and if you're only going once a day, even if it's like a lot, like you feel like you have Montezuma's Revenge, right, at that one time, you still have residual. And that's just a one and done deal. So when people do a cleanse, a lot of times they're like, oh my gosh, that, I was pooping all the time, and da 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 da. And then they went back to eating, and then they're going back to the way they poop. So here's me. Well, when you're doing something to support your colon, and they're doing a cleanse and all this, it should continue, but it shouldn't feel like you're like having you went to some third world country and licked the streets, right? It should just be normal. This is like a new normal. Um, ICP has a mix of fibers. Here we go, you have psyllium, you have oat bran, you have flax and fennel seeds. All of these do different things. They are forms of soluble and insoluble fiber. I have to read this because, you know, I can make chicken, which I don't anymore, but you know, I gotta remember all the things. In addition to that, in addition to all those fibers that help work like a scrub brush, all those fibers do something different in your body. In addition to that, you have digestive enzymes. Somebody was asking me last night, we were talking offline, she's like, so what are enzymes? I said, here's the deal. To those you meat eaters out there, which I think is probably most of the population, when you tenderize a meat, you tenderize it with an enzyme. It breaks down that meat. That's what enzymes, um, what is it, the protease, the phytase, all those different enzymes do with the food in our body. We shouldn't have to take enzymes, and yet we've totally depleted the soil. So the way God designed it is we would, we would uh, plant every six to seven years, and then in the seventh year, you let the ground rest. And then you go somewhere else. And you let that ground rest, and you do nothing to it. And you let rain, and you let soil turn up, and you do all those things. And then you come back, and you replant and you do the things. And that adds in the appropriate amount of minerals and nutrients and enzymes. Nobody does that anymore because we want to have strawberries in the middle of winter, which is not a thing. It's not a thing. And so we constantly are, are over tilling and over harvesting our soil. Consequently, we don't have the enzymes in our food that we need. Also, people cook the hell out of their foods. And so when you are cooking your food, the moment you cook it, the moment you apply heat, you are taking away those enzymes. So even if you're steaming it, if you pick um, a strawberry right off the thing, off the little vine, you get it and you eat it. It is the most perfect, perfect live food you could ever eat. 
you take it home, you wash it, you let it sit on your counter for an hour, it's still great strawberry, but it is now, the enzymes are less. Now I know we don't cook strawberries, but if we make jam or whatever out of it, as you know. Um, same thing with green beans. You take a green bean right off the thing. You eat it right away, you get exactly the nutrients that God wanted you to have, minus some enzymes that should be there, but not because of the soil. Um, you take it home, enzymes are gone, some of the nutrients are gone, you steam it. Still a good food, but not as high quality as raw. You microwave that sucker, and here's me, now you just made it a dead food, that was dumb. Or you cook it a lot, well now it's just a tasty green bean, but there's not a ton of nutrients. You feel me? So, the more we apply heat to it, the less nutrients our food has. That's why raw food diets are amazing. Amazing! All right, the other thing is, is that um, ICP is full of essential oils. Let me share with you those oils. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> Hold on. So it's got oils in it. That's that's helpful, I know. I gotta find which oils um, are in there because I know that will totally help you guys. But there are oils in it, and what do we know about oils? Is that as we add an oil to any supplement, it's gonna make it more bioavailable in our body. It's gonna help our body absorb it and do the things it needs to do. I know there's fennel, I know there's pe our friend peppermint, um, there's also diet, uh, no that's comfort tone, <laughs> so sorry, I'm now on comfort tone. Um, I was getting ahead of myself, diatomaceous earth, which I will talk to you guys about that in just one moment. Um, I can't find the oils, you can look them up, it's fine, but I know peppermint's in there, I know fennel, um, all those things are so good for your belly. So as you go in and as you're cleaning out the colon and as you're doing the things, it is going to help your belly with the oils. Now, lastly, and then I'll move on to comfort tone. Um, <clears throat> this is not a one and done thing. I tell people to use this for at least three months, this trio. But then, keep following up with ICP once a day, maybe once every other day, because it helps things keep moving. You're going to eat that Mike's Pastry. Some of y'all are still gonna eat that meat no matter how much I tell you. You know what rots in your gut, right? No matter how much, you're still gonna do those things. So you need to keep that stuff moving. Okay, this is not a cleanse, this is a gentle, just removing of what you need to do. Now, comfort tone. Comfort tone is different than ICP, and yes, you need them together. Comfort tone is, a, it's called cleanse, supplement, and natural detox capsules that you wanna take all the time. This is not a colon cleanse, we're all done. It is a gentle cleansing supplement. Our body was designed to cleanse itself this is gonna help it along. What do, the big deal about Comfort Tone is, there's this, uh, how do you say, paracelsis, uh, little fibers, little hairs in your colon that help move the poop through the system. If these are too blocked up and there's too much of a traffic jam, it cannot do its job properly. This Comfort Tone will help it contract and do the things it needs to do more effectively in ways that you just maybe can't. Um, it's also beneficial to your liver, to your gallbladder, and to your overall belly health. So this, it helps all the internal organs that supports your digestion, okay? Um, the oils in here, I'm gonna tell you this real quick, just German chamomile, peppermint, tangerine, but also Akatea. Guys, hear me. Order like two or three bottles extra of your comfort tone because it has, we have quality control in Young Living, so we don't um, GMO anything, we don't, fake manufacture it, we just make sure it's the purest quality ever. And Akatea is, it's not as easy to grow. And so anytime you see something with Akatea in it that you love, grab two. Just grab two, okay? So all of these are great for belly health, but they're also very gentle and very soothing. Akatea is a kin, it's a family member of cinnamon bark, so you guys know about blood sugar support, um, appetite control, all of those things. It's got uh, cascara in it, which helps to, that's what helps the food move. But the other thing that it has, the diatomaceous earth, so this is an intestinal cleansing agent. Okay, an intestinal cleansing agent, diatomaceous earth. This is something that you can give to your dogs. This is something we've been throwing in our pool, um, which we were telling our neighbor, we're like, yeah, I think we can eat this, and she goes, uh, I don't think you want to do that. I'm like, no, it's good for your intestines. It tastes like mud, 
but it's still good for you. So this already has that in there and it's good to help clean your intestines out. It's got licorice in there, guys, licorice root. Um, trace minerals, there's cayenne pepper, oh my word. So all these amazing cleansing oils and herbs and little woo-woo things that your body needs. Um, how you do this. So ICP you can take once or twice a day. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, it tastes like like a thick mud, but suck it up buttercup and just get it down. Just get it down. Um, and then comfort tone, if you are new to this, do it like once in the morning, one at night. As you get more used to your body doing all the things and moving and grooving, then you might do like one or two in the morning and then three at night. That's what I've been doing and it's delightful. Guys, talk about flat belly. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, let me think, Ali just said, yep, 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 yep. Um, colon cleanse should be done first over all the systems. Ali, exactly, that's exactly what I've been talking about all week. Let me reiterate and then I'll let you guys go. Well, no, I should tell you about enzymes and then we can be done. Um, no, we'll do essential enzymes another day. So if you do a liver cleanse, if you do a gut cleanse or any of that like stomach, liver, any of that cleanse and it dumps into your colon and your colon's like, what the hell do you want me to do with this stuff? It's all backed up. It's going to return all those toxins you just got rid of back in your system. You have got to get rid of what's in your colon first, then you can do the other things. Um, I said I will talk about essential zymes another day. It's because I want to talk about allerzyme, detoxzyme, essential zyme, plain, and four together. But real quick, enzymes are needed. So you take essential zymes four before your biggest meal. We've been doing it before dinner. Um, that's why it's on our counter in there because I will forget. If I have it right back here is where my supplements are. If I have it in that cabinet, out of sight, out of mind. Right? Um, and so anything that I want to make sure I'm taking on a routine goes right there in my kitchen. And so we take essential signs before our biggest meal. It's gonna help break down all that, all that stuff. Can you take it more than once a day? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, if you have a hard time breaking down food, take it before you eat. Essential sign four, um, if you're gonna be naughty like me and go like have some cheesecake or a big block of cheese or something, then have that. That's what that's for, is to help break down things that are hard for you to digest. All right, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope that to this week, this month, this calendar 31 days you are popping in the cleansing trio kit in your er cart because let me tell you let me tell you you do this for three months hand to god you are going to feel a thousand times better i promise you you're going to be that person that's like i didn't know i didn't feel as amazing as i could have felt that's a true story because that has happened in our home all right guys have a great day we'll see you soon